Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to cover the basics of the Commons plugin and a little bit about basically caching in general and how Webpack does that. In my previous video I was talking to you about build hash and chunk cache and no hash and the different considerations that you have to have when you you know when you're using hashing in Webpack. So in this video we're going to talk about how to extract your dependencies into a separate file and put that on the user on the user's machine basically and the the re main reason the biggest benefit to this is that if you have a lot of dependencies usually libraries such as jQuery and so forth these are very big files and that's you know if you and they actually don't change all that much you you might sh might change your own code a lot but you don't really change your dependencies all that much which you know if you can make the user download that stuff just once and then just keep it there in the cache on the user side that's the optimal solution because you know that means that on a reoccurring user like when they come back to your page they're going the page is going to load much faster for them so let's start let's start with the absolute most basic setup for a vendor file or a dependency file so the way that it works, in, if we look at this configuration I have in front of me here, you can see that it's very, all, all, let's just cover the basics first. So we have an entry point called BAS, and then I'll talk about this vendor dependency here, vendor declaration in just a moment. We output our files to the dist folder, and then we have our file name here, so we set the name and just chunk cache in, in the middle and then a chunk cache so that we generate a unique hash for each file that is being generated and then we have this thing here commons plugin I'll cover that in a moment and finally HTML webpack plugin which is in the previous video I explained that this is just going to inject these files as script tags in this HTML file and output it to the dist folder up here that's it so what's going on here well you can see that by I've declared vendor but instead of just a path I've actually set a array here with jQuery the string jQuery inside of it and what I'm doing here is that I'm expressing to webpack that I want you to generate a file that holds jQuery right extract as, as chunk that packages jQuery inside of this file and that, that's that's all this is. I can actually declare as many dependencies. I can do load ash, you know, I can declare, declare any dependencies I want there, which is pretty nice. So I can actually declare which libraries are going to go into a separate file and what's going to stay in the code. Awesome. And then I use this common chunks plugin. This is, this is very important. These two need to live together. You need to name this the same thing as up here, so that it, uh, so that the common chunks plugin understands that hey, when you're like, when web practice is doing its magic and processing all your files, creating the bundle, extract everything that's in this array into a file with this name. That's all this is doing. So if I now do a build and I run all of this stuff here, yada yada yada, build 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 build. So wasteful, but hey that's the way it is and let's go to vendor here we are and as we can see now as expected we're generating a bash bass file which holds our you know the code that is ours and there's a vendor chunk cache over here which holds the 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 code that is actually J, that is J, jQuery basically it holds our dependency I'll show you our like the files so you can see how easy it is all I've done is to import I'm not even using it I just imported jQuery and I'm logging something out now I'll use a tool stats like this which is basically it's called a webpack bundle analyzer and it will show us the dependencies now notice that it's chunking these like these files oh wait actually I have to do something because it becomes a little bit unclear when you have this like that I'll just add some extra stuff because our script is so tiny it doesn't actually show in the output let's run that again let's see if we get something better yeah here we are so this is webpack bundle analyzer it's very useful to kind of figure out what's in your bundles and you can go and look that look that up it's a completely different tool in of itself and as you can see now that we have w this massive box here 
which is exactly what I was saying. Wender dot chunkash dot da da da. This is where the node modules and like th this is where we extracted jQuery basically. So we can see that in this file we actually have jQuery as a dependency. And this tiny little box over here, do you see? Bass chunkash. That's where our code lives because it's so tiny. And that th that that's basically just what I wanted to show you so that you kind of understand that this is actually, you know, see the sizes of these two files is, you know, this immense. Now the issue here is, as you may have noticed, that if I now go, you, you see here, if I go and change, do, 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 let's say I change this a little bit, I'll just do something like that. And then I build everything again. Let's just wait until the build is finished to be sure that everything is working, so I'm not showing you the wrong thing. Did you see that both these hashes changed? And that's kind of that's that's kind of what we want to address here. Like, why does both of them change? Why do both of these hashes change? Well, the core issue is that, as I explained in the previous video, the internal mechanisms of Webpack is forcing this behavior. So how can we solve this? Well, let's look at another example. So, let's do a like, or rather, let's actually address another issue first because I want to actually show you another issue. So, the th two things you need to consider with this is that we have an unexpected behavior about you know Webpack generating basically a shunk cache every time we make any change to our code, even if it doesn't touch like the other dependencies. That's one consideration, and the other consideration is that this is in my opinion like a less I, th th this may work for you if let's say that you don't for some reason want to include all of your like dependencies in a single file maybe you want to be very fine grained and you want to actually spe specify exactly what dependency you want to be in what bundle then this is a nice approach but what happens if i do this let's do that and then actually, let's do the stats just to show you very quickly what this means. Did you see? Now we added a dependency. We are now depending on Lodash in our main file here, and it's actually included here, and it's not in the vendor file. And maybe this is what you want. I personally like it when all of my dependencies are in the same you know, same chunk, because usually I want them to be in the same chunk, because I don't often, you know, it's very rare that I want dependencies that are very slow to update and so forth to be in the main file. And if I wanted to move this back into the vendor bundle, I have to declare it here, just as jQuery. And that, to me, gets a little bit tedious. I don't li really like that. So let's do this instead. Let's, like, let's look at, an, at another configuration that is slightly better. So as you can see now we don't have the vendor entry anymore and what's up with that? Well what has happened is that we have used and this you know if you want to know how this works it does it, uh, it, it this is not all that straightforward I had to actually dig around a little bit for this so if you don't know it you know this is this is your chance to learn something I didn't know either. So there is a property on the common chunk plugin called min chunks, which is it can do many different things. And usually, it is a way for you to express that okay, you need a certain. It basically used it's used as a number for the most part to declare how many occurrences of a resource needs to exist in the different depend entry points in order for it to be considered a common chunk, so that it's pulled into the vendor bundle but you can also pass it a function and this is kind of cool you can pass it and you know it's basically an object with a little a bit of metadata and there's a property called resources or resource virtually and what's cool is that this is the path to the file that webpack is considering to pull into the vendor bundle and if you return if this function returns true it's going to consider that file part of the bundle and that's pretty awesome because if you do something like this, a regex matching on node modules, that means that any file that is in your node modules are going to be included into your file. So let's uh, 
do this. Did you notice something? Okay, we the have shrunk our our main, you know, our main depend uh, our main file here. So just trust that it's over here. I don't have to go and update the log logging again just to show it to you. But did you see that now Lodash is here with jQuery, and I didn't have to change anything, like. I didn't have to specify anything, it just pulled it in magically. And this to me is kind of cool because now I can actually just, if I'm a lazy person and you know, as, as dependencies are added to the project, I can simply, I don't have to care, I can trust that the vendor bundle is just going to up, auto update itself. So that's a little tips tip from me to you, hopefully you, you like it. And well, the next part of this series is going to be on how to solve this issue because we not, now that we have solved the convenience of like pushing all of our dependencies into a separate file what we really want to do next is to figure out how can we solve this issue we have with the shunk cache generating like every time we make a change to our own code the vendor files hash is updated as well. How can you know we want to figure out a way of solving this and I will cover that in the next video tutorial. Hopefully you'll stick around and hopefully this was useful to you.